Good evening, class. Welcome to our taxation class for this evening. Okay, now um, we want to continue from where we stopped the last time. We were having a nice time on taxation of business income capital allowances. Now, a quick recap on what we did in part two, which is capital allowance. First, we looked at the rate of capital allowances for initial allowance and annual allowance. Then we saw how to calculate annual allowances and how we prorated it for the first year because the number of months in the first year is not up to 12 months in the basis period. We then looked at the basis period for capital allowance and that there are two situations that need to be ironed out, which is the overlapping basis period and the gaps. So capital allowance does not allow for overlap and gaps. We said the rule for overlap is that whether, whenever there is an overlap, that period of overlap belongs to the earlier basis, earlier year of assessment. And when there is a gap, the period of gap belongs to the later year of assessment, except on cessation of business, when the period of gap would belong to the earlier year of assessment. We then looked at capital allowances restriction. We said the restriction is two third of the accessible profits and it's only relates to all other companies that are not into agriculture or manufacturing. It then means that if you are doing a question on capital allowances, you have to first check if they are not into agriculture or not into manufacturing for you to start applying the restriction. We talked about the carry back of capital allowance, which is one of the things I would like to display today. We talked about the, we did one exercise here, and one of the main things I demonstrated in James Nigeria Limited is how to determine the basis period for profit and how the basis period for capital allowances are deduced and look at the capital qualifying capital expenditure that relates to it. Then we are also told to calculate the capital allowances. And so what happened is that you calculate for the first year, the initial allowance and the annual allowance. Second year, you do the same thing. The third year, you do the same. And there's something that just occurred to me the last time we treated this capital allowance issue. There's something I overlooked. Now, if you look at this 2001, we have machinery, we have furniture. Okay, machinery and furniture. Okay, now it's not even where I'm going. Now look at, okay, machinery and furniture. Let me see what's the, the rates, the annual allowance rates. Let's see. Machinery. Furniture and fittings is four years. Good. Furniture and fittings is four years. So there's something I omitted, which I believe you should have corrected. 
Now this furniture by 2004, by 2004, that will be the final year. That will be the final year that furniture would be claiming capital allowance because this is the year one, this is year two, this is year three, this is year four. So we found out that the amount you calculate for furniture every year, in the last year, you just reduce it by 10 Naira. That's all. So that means for this 972500, you should be getting nine seven to four ninety okay because ten naira will have to be in the books so that is the last year you are claiming the capital allowance and in 2005 okay let me see machinery machinery to also the same thing machinery Machinery and furniture, you'll be having for 10, 10 naira left. So what it means here is it will be 972480. Because 20 naira, 10, 10 naira each would have been gone, I would have been remaining in the books. Okay. That would mean that for the year 2005. There'll be no capital allowance claimed for machine and for furniture. That will mean that this 180 for 2005. Okay, so let's go back to 2004. In 2004, In 2004, we will be having just 297,500. Let me be punching it. 297,500 297, for factory building. For machinery, you'll be having 349,990. For furniture, You'll be having one one two four nine zero. Everything is seven ninety five nine eighty, just the way I said. Then here, your motor van and your delivery van will still retain their two one two five hundred. So everything will be 972480. So just 20 naira will be going off here. So instead of using this 972500, you will use less 20 naira. That is for the year 2004. In the year 2003, you use the whole of 972500. But when it comes to 2004, you will less it by two. 20 naira. Then when it comes to 2005, this was a bit little mistake. What will be there for capital allowance will be 297,500 for factory building. For machinery, you will claim no annual allowance because it has been fully capitalized. For furniture, you will claim no capital allowance because it has been fully capitalized. Kindness, you're asking me, do we have what you are referring to? You have my material now. You have my material. I'm trying to correct certain things which I, I did not do. So I'm talking about 2005. Somebody said the screen is blank. If you can see my screen, please let me know. If you cannot see my, if you can see my screen, can you go to the chat board and say, uh, 
You guys are not seeing my screen. Let me stop sharing and share again. What's happening? If you can see my screen, please go to the chat room and say you can see my screen. If you cannot see my screen, go to the chat room and say you cannot see my screen. Somebody is saying from inception, they can't see my screen, but you have, you have my material. And I said it's James Nigeria Limited, the very one we did the last time. So, um, we are wasting time talking about what I've said before. Okay, let's look at, Capital allowance number one. The year 2001 is okay. The year 2002 is also okay. For 2003, it's also okay. So look at the 972, 500, it's fine. The 2004 is what I'm trying to adjust. This 972,500 is a little error. It's supposed to be 972,480. This is because this machinery and furniture that has four years, this is the first year, second year, third year. By 2004, they will be in their last year of claim. And so since they have not sold them out, we are going to leave 10 Naira in the assets, in the books. So 10 Naira for furniture, 10 Naira for machinery. That's 20 Naira. That becomes 9725480. I'm also correcting this 2005, which is what I was doing before. You said you can not see my screen. So let's correct it now. Now, it means that asset purchased in 2001, we are only going to claim factory building, 297,500. Then when it comes to machinery, we will not claim anything. So this, three, this 350 is not supposed to be sold because the asset has been fully claimed. The same thing applies to 112500. Now, when it comes to delivery van, as of 2005, delivery van will be spending its fourth year and final year. So instead of 62500, we will say 62490. The same thing with motor car, it will be spending its fourth year. So we'll say, 149,990. So the total capital allowance we are going to be using is 500. Okay, then we will not come and use the 75,000 for office equipment. 75,000. 
So what we will do, we'll be using is 584,980. So you are just this figure, 584,980. So that's what will be used here and here. Sorry, that is what will be used there. So the figure will change. This figure in your year four will change, and so is this figure will change. And when you do that, when we are calculating our tax, the capital allowance that we put here will change. And so we'll put what we have adjusted and also put what we've adjusted here. So that's all. So not to worry, we'll still take another example for capital allowance when we are looking at exercise 2.2. .2. Now I want to use this opportunity to demonstrate the carry back. So we are going to be doing the carry front and the carry back. Energy Resources Limited is a company engaged in the incorporation and sale of new electric cookers. Incorporation and sale. So it's just like they are coupling it. They are not manufacturers. They are not the manufacturers. So that means they are not into manufacturing. Um, they are not agriculture. So what do you think? It means their yeah, capital allowances will be prorated, okay, will be restricted, I mean, by two thirds of capital of accessible profits. The company seized business on 31st July, 2008. What does that tell you? One, 2008 is this year of cessation which is the ultimate year. That makes 2007 the penultimate year. That makes it the penultimate year. Okay, now that that is done, when we say seized business, there is a possibility that profit or loss may occur. Loss may occur in the cessation of business. What happens to loss? when it occurs in cessation of business, it is lost finally. But if there is a capital allowance that has not yet been relieved and we hit the cessation period, it means that instead of bouncing forward or getting seized or um, lapsed like profit, it goes backward. It goes backward for five years backward, starting from the penultimate year. Okay, so we look at the year of assessments. Okay, now we are told here this is year ended 30th September. What does it mean when we say year ended 30th September? That's your basis period. So that means this is from October 1 to 30th September 2000, 2001. So I told you the last time that simply come by this side and write your year of assessment. So when the basis period ends in 2000, the year of assessment will be 2001. When the basis period ends with 2001, year of assessment will be 2002, and so on. And I told you that in capital allowance, you always be given year of assessment that it relates to. So now we are not told to compute the capital allowance. It has been done for us. Now the question is, there is a balancing allowance after the disposal of all the company's assets on the on the day wow well, on the day the business ceased and that balancing allowance amounts to 2,350,000 
Okay, now we are told to compute the company's income tax liability for 2001 to 2008, giving all relief as much as possible. So we look at this relief. What is the relief that is given as much as possible? So let's go to the solution to this question. Solution to this question. Okay. So now let's look at the solution. This is the first year of assessment from this question. This is 2001 year of assessment. And we said it's going to be from August, I'm sorry, October 1 to September 30th. And that is what we have here, 2000. So the year ended September 30th, 2000. Now capital and um, accessible profit is this very profit we're given here. 1,000, 1, 1,800,000, and that's where I got it from. Then our capital allowance claimable. So you see capital allowance claimable is this. This is the capital allowance that you are supposed to claim in that year 2001. That is why it is called capital allowance claimable. But out of this amount claimable, how much can you claim? So always be doing your two third. Two third of 1,800,000, which is this 1,800,000, will give you 1,200,000. So you see this your two third is smaller than what is claimable. So you choose the smaller out of the two. So what you do, when you bring your capital allowance claimable and you do your two third, always take the smaller one and put it here. The smaller of two third and your claimable becomes what is actually going to be claimed. So by putting 1,200,000 here and putting it here again, we are serving two different purposes. By putting it in this first place, we are trying to see how much will be carried to next year after we have claimed the 1,200,000. It means 750 capital allowance to be taken to next year. Now here, we are actually claiming it now from profits. When we claim it from profits, what will actually remain for tax is 600. So it is this 600 we are going to tax. And if you look at it, we've taxed it, give you 180, your education tax is done on accessible profit. Then we'll move on to 2002. The year of assessment is 2-2. Basis period ends in September 30th, 21. So it means this is a figure I'm going to get as my accessible profit. And we have it here. Then what about capital allowance? Okay. You see this 75,000 that was carried forward? We have now brought it forward here now. We have brought it. Then how much do we have for the year? I'll go to 2002 capital allowances. I have 920 for the year. So I'll bring the 920 and bring the 750 and add them together. That means I am supposed to claim 1,670 this year. 920 actually made this year and the balance from last year, 750. Now, having brought 1,670 to the table, how much can I claim? All I need to do is to do two third of this and check with this, which one of them is smaller. So when I do two third of 2,200, I know it's going to be smaller. It's giving me 1,533333. I write it in both sides. And that, that way I have my capital allowance to be carried forward next year. Then this is my taxable profits that will be charged tax. 
then I charge my tax and I charge education tax. I move to the next year, 2003. This is my accessible profit. We all know where I got it from. That's this. And my capital allowance is going to give me 1 million 350. That's it. 1 million 350. But I have something brought forward. This is what I had from last year. And this is the charge for the year. So the total available is this. Then how many can I relieve? Once again, I will do to third. Two divided by three multiplied by 3,500,000 is going to give me 2,333,333. So you can see 2,333 is far higher than 1,486,667. I say choose the lower. So I'm bringing everything. So this available capital allowance is lower than the maximum you can allow. So we put it in both ways. That means see capital allowance, you have nothing left. Your capital allowance, you have nothing left. You've cleared all your capital allowance. And now you have this, it's your taxable profit. Okay, so if this is a taxable profit, this will become your income tax and here will become your education tax. You move on to the next one, 2004. In 2004, of course, we know where I got my 1,500,000 as accessible profit. And this is the capital allowance for the year that was not brought forward because we have cleared it up last year. So this is the capital allowance for the year. We have it here, 750, 870. Then how much can you relieve? Once again, you do to third of one five, and I have one million. One million is far bigger than 870. So we do our 870. 870 can be cleared. So once again, we have zero here. Our taxable profit is 630. Then, you, of course, you know how to calculate your tax. We we'll move to 2005, and things are almost becoming similar. We know where we got our accessible profit, one seven. Our capital allowance for the year is 850. You can see it here, 850. Okay. Then, when we do to third of one seven. One seven times two divided by three, we have one million one thirty three, which is far bigger than eight fifty. So eight fifty qualifies to be indoor here, qualifies to be here. And when we do that, eight fifty still becomes our taxable profit, and we calculate our tax, education tax. Okay. We go to the year 2006. In the year 2006, this is our accessible profit. This is our capital allowance. Nothing brought forward. And when we do to third of 1 million 200, 1 million 200 times two over three, we have 800. 800 is far bigger than 730. So of course we put our 730 down here. Our taxable profit now becomes 470. Our tax is 12141. And the education tax is 24. Now we go to what is interesting to me now, because the question says, seize this business. We've entered the penultimate year. Penultimate year is 2007. We are going to treat it in two ways. This is from October 2.5 to September 2.6, preceding year basis. So this is your year of, sorry, your year of assessment. 
is ending 26. So this 950 is your annual and um, is your accessible profit, and you have it here. 950. Oh. Excuse me. Now you have as your penultimate year as 950 be preceding year basis. You will compare it with actual year basis. Actual year basis is from January 27 to December 31st to 7. So you ask yourself, where can I get January 1 to 7 account? Of course, you will get it inside here that has to 7. Because this account starts from August and October 1 to 6 to end in September 2 7. So at one point in time, you have January 2 7. So from January to September is nine months. So we are taking nine months here. And the remaining three months out of these 10 months, we'll take it under. So you see, nine over 12, 780 plus three months out of 10 from 250. Everything gives us 660. Okay. Sorry. You look at the penultimate here that you've assessed. Which one of them is bigger? That is what you choose. So we choose the 950. So you see, I've put it by this side, 950 is being chosen. Then what is our capital allowance for 2007 year of assessment? What's our capital allowance for 2007 year of assessment? Once again, it's 950. So 950 here, 950 here, capital allowance. Of course, you have to do your two third. You must do two third. I know two third will be smaller than 950. So two divided by three times 950. That will give you 633333, which is what we have here. We did our 633, we put it here and we put it here. Coincidentally, we are putting two same numbers up and down. Now, this is your capital allowance you have. When you remove this one, that is claim this, this will be carried forward to the cessation period. Okay, now this is your profit. You remove this capital allowance. This is the taxable profit. This is from here that they will charge you your tax and you've done your tax. Now let's go to the ultimate year. And let's see what's gonna happen here. In ultimate year, they said 10 months ending in July. So what do we do? Ultimate year is actual year basis. So we're going to start from January. So obviously this account that is 10 months must have started in October. So October, November, December, that's three months. Then January to July is seven. That is what make it 10. So we are going to look from January to July. So it means we are taking seven months out of 10 months. And that's what we did here, seven months out of 10. And that gives me 175,000. Now, of interest to us is our capital allowance. Now look at this capital allowance that you brought forward, which is this. Now, we are told that there is no capital allowance here in 2.8. But the company sold all their assets and they have a balancing amount amounting to this. So that's what you bring here. 
and total claimable will become this. Now, let's see something. In your final year, your capital allowances, you don't do to third of accessible profits on the final year. The reason being that you want to clear off all your capital allowances as much as possible. You want to clear them off. And so instead of you doing to third, try to see how you can clear them off. If it means clearing everything that is your profit, do so. So you see, the capital allowance claimable is bigger than your profit. What you do is you put your profit as, so put the same amount of profit as claimable in capital allowance. What it means here is that you want all your profits to be used to claim capital allowance. So can you see your taxable profit now has become zero? That is the point. Your taxable profit should be zero so that you use it to claim your capital allowance. So when you clear your profits, the capital allowance balance will now become this. But notice here that it is not carried forward. It's carried backward, carried backward. Of course, you will not be having income tax, neither will you have education tax. So you are going to carry this figure backward five years, starting with the penultimate year. So you are moving from the ultimate year, you go backward to the penultimate year. So when you go to the penultimate year, let me recall what I have in penultimate year. Recall this in penultimate year. Recall this taxable profit that you had just after you cleared your capital allowance and just before you charge tax. Recall that taxable profit, which is this. You just finished clearing capital allowance, but now they are telling you there are more capital allowance to be cleared though. Clear it, and that means this is the balance brought backward. This balance brought backward is bigger than your profit. So what do you do? You put your profit as amount claimable. Essence is to make your taxable profit zero. So what are they telling you? If your taxable profit is zero, they are telling you, Maybe you've paid tax before. Please, you better collect your tax because you're not supposed to pay tax. Your tax is supposed to be zero, but now you've paid tax. Recall your tax back because you've used all your taxable profits to reduce the capital allowance. So you've started carrying back for this is the first year. This balance is going to be carried backward again. So let's see from an ultimate year, you go to 2006 and you recall this profit 470. So that is what we did here. We recall this 470. And we are saying, okay, 470, don't charge tax yet. Don't charge tax. Any charge tax you've charged, likely refund. Okay, now this backward carry, carry capital allowance carried backward is what is brought here. Still, it is bigger than your profit. So that means you put your profit in brackets and use it to reduce your capital allowance. Capital allowance has now been reduced to 1705, which you carry further backward. Your taxable profit is zero, they've refunded you your tax. So you go further, there's a third year, you have 850, sorry, assessable, um, taxable profit is 850, that's this one. So you recall, that's this 850 here. Okay, now this capital allowance carried backward, 
capital allowance brought backward. Then how many can you claim? You claim your profits by putting it in the bracket here. And it has further reduced it to 855,000. That is your capital allowance has reduced. Your profit is zero. They are going to refund you. Now let's go to the fourth year backward. I'll recall my 630,000. So that's what I'm recalling here now, 630. Initial, um, your capital allowance brought backward is 855,000. You use it to clear your outstanding capital allowances. So you see 855 is bigger than 630. So you put your 630 inside the bracket. The taxable profit will become zero. Capital allowance remaining is two to five thousand. We bring it to next year. In next year, which is this, you recall your taxable profit two million and thirteen thousand three three three. That's beautiful. Which is this? For your capital allowance is two to five thousand. So you compare this two to five thousand with this two million and thirteen thousand three three three. So the capital allowance is smaller. Put it in a bracket. Put it in a bracket. Now, as long as this one is zero and this is the final year of carry backward, it means you've successfully carried everything backward. Otherwise, if something were to be left here, it means that company have lost a capital allowance forever, okay? So that means this is their new taxable profit instead of this. So what will they pay as tax? They are supposed to pay this as tax and whatever was paid before, they are going to refund the difference. Mind you, it's only company income tax that is affecting. It is not affecting education tax. The education tax is not affected. Okay, look at the summary. In the year 2000, this is the tax we paid. Two sorry, 2001, this is the tax. 2002, this is the tax. 2003, this is the tax. So this is what we just calculated last. That instead of 600 and what? Instead of um, six, that 604, we are paying 536, so they should give us our difference. In the year 2004, we have paid tax before, but we are supposed to pay zero. They are going to give us the balance. 205, we've paid something. They are going to give us the balance. Same thing with 206 and 207. They are going to give 206 and 207. They are going to give us the tax we've paid. In 208, we never paid tax because we had loss. So this is two. Oh, eight. So you start counting backward one, two, three, four, and five. So that is the carry backward for five years. Study a similar example in skills taxation question, question number one. It's a long question that is like two or two pages and that's a question, question number one. Try and see, it's a similar example of this, try and understand it. We now come to part three of our class for today, which is loss relief. Now we are going to be looking at loss as it relates to individuals and as it relates to company. We'll be looking at what they call the carry forward loss and what we call the current year loss. Now, some of the rules we should know in loss are this, okay? Now, trading losses to be deducted from accessible profit of an accessible year shall not exceed the actual loss 
incurred by the company in the previous assessment year. Now, you understand this better when we treat losses that has to do with commencement of business and perhaps change of accounting year, if a loss occurred in that period, or perhaps in cessation of business, you will find out that in those abnormal period, excuse me, that is when you will be having this kind of situation. B, losses are not aggregated with accessible profits in the computation of company's total profits in strict compliance with the provisions of section 31 subsection one of CETA. Consequently, a trading loss from the companies, from one of the company's sources of income cannot be set off against trading profits from another source. So that has to do with carry forward loss. If you have two lines of business, one of them is agriculture and another one is manufacturing. Then maybe you have a, a, another type of business, maybe you are doing it to real estate. There are three different sources of income. So if your real estate has loss, but your, your manufacturing company has profit, you don't aggregate them together. You deal with them separately. So the loss from anytime you have profit, that is when you will try to claim the loss that you made for that line of business. Okay? So each line of business will account for its profit or loss. So you cannot add all the profits together and use it to offset one other company that has loss. When trade ceases, any terminal loss in the year of cessation will be deemed to be lost forever. And so just like we, unlike what we did in capital allowance where we had to carry back for five years, we cannot even carry loss backward for one year. What's the talk of five years? Okay. Let's look at example 2.3. Let's look at this example. Dominion Enterprises commence business on what date? July 1, 2004. The following are the results submitted to the revenue. So you see this is period ended December 31, 2004. We have a loss of how much? 180. And now this is a capital allowance that has been calculated for us. Now look at it, now the capital allowance is for the basis, is for the year of assessment, not basis period capital allowance. So you see that, this profit is for this period. Capital allowance is for the year of assessment. So that is how we have here. They said, compute the total income or loss. When we say total income, total income is a taxable profit. So it means total income means accessible profit minus capital allowance will give you total income. We are told to ignore right of election. Anytime you don't see this, you have to do two things if the question is about cessation. So each time they don't want you to do right of election, they will tell you that. So look at the question, this is page 15, look at the question. So let's watch how this will be dealt with. 
this is the question here. Let me go to the answer flow here. Okay, now we look at the year of assessment. The business started in July 1, 2004. Commencement through 2004 is our year of assessment, year one. It will start from July 1 to December 31st. And that's what we did here. And how many months is this? This is how many months? This is seven months. Sorry, six months. This is six months. And they gave you the period from July 1 to December 31st. They gave you that six months period as 180. And they say a loss. We bring it down here, 180. Some will decide to put it in brackets, some will decide not to put it in brackets. But we can still put it in brackets to show it's a loss. Then your capital allowance is 30,000. So you see your capital allowance is 30,000 here. There is no way you can claim it. So two things, we are carrying your capital allowance. You cannot claim it from loss. It's only from profit you can claim capital allowance. So your capital allowance will be carried to next year. Your loss will be carried to the next year. So whenever you have a loss, your taxable profit is nil. You have no profit. The taxable profit is zero. So in the year 2005, our basis period is going to be from the date the business started, count 12 months. So do we have it here? The day the business started is from July, and they say count 12 months. So this here is six months. We also going to need six months here. So if you look at it now, we've taken, we're going to take this 180 here, plus six months out of this 120, which is going to give me 60. So if you look at it, this 180 is gone, plus six months out of it, which is 60. 60 plus 180 is going to give me 240. So our loss for the year calculated is 240. But there's a rule that says that your loss, which you are going to carry forward or which you are going to claim, should not be more than the actual loss incurred. Out of this 240, can you see that we have 180 here? Which is the same this one, which is still the same this 180 we took here. This 180 has been treated in has been treated in the previous year, and of course that is what we are bringing forward here. And now it is forming part of this 180. That is the same 180 here. So we're not going to be carrying two of 180 as though we made loss of 180 twice. The law says just pick only one. We are writing it two times, just pick one. So you see, let me explain again. This is your 180 and 60, which is this 240. This 180, is the same 180 you are bringing forward here. So if you are adding these two together, it's as though your loss has increased from 180 to 420. But is that so? No, your loss has not gone to 420. How much is your actual loss? Let's see. Your actual loss is this 180 plus 60 from here which is 240. So you see it here, 180, which you've treated here, which is appearing two times, plus 60, which we just brought now, makes it 240. So it means that instead of carrying 420 as your loss to the next year, 
what we shall carry is just this 240 because this is the actual loss incurred. We go to year three. In year three, which is 2006, the preceding year basis starts from January 1, 2, 5 to December 31st, 2, 5. So where is December 31st, 2, 5? Is this. This is from January to December. And this is it. Hmm. And that is this 120. Remember, we said we are going to carry this 240 to next year. Why are we carrying 240 instead of 420? We've treated it and said inside this 420, there is 180 inside, which we've taken twice. So we are going to remove it. That is why we are having 240. It is this 240 that we are bringing here. If we add 240 to 120, we now have 360. But how much is our actual loss? Our actual loss is simply this 180 plus 120, which is 300. Meaning that this 60 we had taken before, we are taking it again. So 60 is appearing two times. So this 300. So we are going to take only 300, which is this 180 and this 120. We have not relieved them, which is 300. Meanwhile, your capital allowances are piling up. For year one, it was 30. For year two, we added 40, it becomes 70. For year three, we are adding another 40 to make it 110. Can you see it? Look at the 40 we just brought from for this year. Look at the ones we've been compiling up the last year. Everything is 110. As long as we don't have any profits, the capital allowance will keep increasing. We'll go to 2007. And in 2007, things change a little. In 2007, our basis period is from January 1, 2, 6 to December 31st, 2, 6. So that's this. And wow, we had a profit of 140. So we brought, we bring it here, profit of 140. Remember, our loss we've been carrying is 30. We now carry the loss from last year. 30,000. So what happened when we have a profit of 140, we'll now bring the loss from the business to 300. If we take all our loss as much as possible, that means we would have cleared 140 and 160 will still be remaining as a loss. So that's this. So this is your loss. Then capital allowance for the year is this 45,000. For year of assessment 27. Now, we are now bringing capital allowance from last year, which we cannot relieve, 110. And it becomes 155. We still cannot relieve it. The total profit is nil because we are still having losses. 2008, what happens to 2008? In 2008, it's year of assessment, January 1 to December 27. And this 260 becomes our accessible profit. 260, that's this year. Then we had a loss previously of 160. So we are now bringing in that loss, 160. So out of 260, we bring 160, 100 will now become the profit that we now have. Now for the year, we made 50,000. 
as capital allowance. Then if you add what we've been carrying forward, 155, everything amounts to 205,000. So we ask, if this is 205, and we have profit of 100,000, how many can we claim as capital allowance? You will do your two third. Two divided by three times 100,000. That gives me 66,667. And it is smaller than 205. So you see us using the smaller one, and we see it here. That means 138333 will be carried forward as capital allowance, while your total profit, which you are asked to calculate, the main thing is 33333 when you remove 66, 67 from 100,000. Then we now go to the last year, 2009. It's based on accessible basis period of January to 2008 to December 31st, 2008. Okay, we are told our profit is 400. So profit is 400. Of course, we've cleared our loss. So there is no loss. Capital allowance for the year. We had none for the year because there is no none for the year. We've cleared everything. So there is no 2009, cleared it. But what about the capital allowance brought forward? It is this one, 33333. That is here that has been brought forward. You add it up together, it's still going to give you 133333. Then you want to relieve the capital allowance, you do 400,000 times two over three. That gives you 266667, which is way bigger than 138333. So you simply repeat 138333 as a capital allowance. And woe and below, your capital allowance has been cleared in 2009. And your total profit is 261667. So this is how we take our losses. So once again, you take your actual loss. If you are looking at for a period of time, you are making losses, your losses should not be more than the actual loss. But profit, sometimes when you have basis period and overlapping profits, we don't mind. They will tax you on the overlapping period. But losses, because it's a relief, you can't be enjoying relief two times. But now this new Finance Act has made it possible that there will be no overlap of profits in any year of assessment. So there'll be no overlap of profits. Capital allowance does not even allow overlap and you will not be seeing losses. The rules for losses would have been amended. So you will not be hearing losses being calculated on actual incurred because they will be on actual incurred. So if you look at it again, it's only when you have profits that you make claim your capital allowance. The question only asks us to calculate taxable profits. Whenever your taxable profit is nil, your tax is zero. But whenever you have accessible profit here, always charge education tax. So it is not this accessible profit or loss that you will be looking at. It's this first one you brought that gives you the education tax that you are liable. For example, look at this 260,000 here versus 100,000. You charge your education tax, you charge your education tax based on the 
260,000. But for the 100,000, that is where you are going to be deducting your capital allowances. Sorry. My notes are acting funny. Point now, if you have any question, feel free to ask. So as I was explaining, this 260 is the basis for your education tax, not this 100,000. Although you've cleared loss here, you are still liable for education tax on 260. But it is this 100 that you are going to clear your capital allowance. So when you are doing two third of capital of accessible profit, you will not do two third of this, but two third of this to get your capital allowance that will be claimable. So I believe we all get the point of the relief of losses. Points to note. The losses from one type of business should not be aggregated and taken from the losses from another kind of business, especially when you are doing carry forward losses. But when you are doing current year loss for individuals, it's allowed. All your losses in the year you incur it, if it is individuals, individuals only practice current year loss and carry forward loss. But companies do not practice current year loss. They only do carry forward loss. So for individuals, you have a loss in that year from all businesses. You add them together and net them off from profits. The only loss that you do not net off is rent, loss from rental income you don't net up the loss. The loss must be treated as a carry forward loss. So we've seen carry forward losses, we've seen current year losses. So current year losses are those losses you made in the current year, especially for, B, for individual. You know, for, for, for company, any loss you made, you are going to carry it forward to the next year. But for individual, any loss you made in that year, you deal with it in that year. If you cannot deal with it, then you carry it forward. So far, that's how we've come to the end of part three. We've come to the end of part three of our, our basis period for profit, basis period, for capital allowance, and basis, and, and uh, what do they call that one is loss relief. In our next class, I'm going to take something critical to your exam, something that seems to be like a recurring decimal in your taxation class. That will be on Monday, when we will be discussing, we'll probably be discussing um, taxation of employment income. So that's very, very uh, crucial to your class, taxation of uh, employment income. Then after that, we'll be going to investment income. So when we finish employment income on Monday, we'll be looking at investment income in the next class. So I'll be taking you, sorry, is it Monday or Tuesday? If then if I'll be taking you on Thursday, I will do that investment income. Otherwise, we'll do that on, on Saturday. So, so far, so good. We've come to the end of the class. I want you to read these topics again, ask questions. And I want to also tell you that 
if you are giving computation of capital allowances as much as possible, try to do it last. Don't try to do it first because it's time consuming. Give a good space for it and do other things. Then come back to do it. It's not compulsory, you must finish it. But you are marked on the strength of your workings. Marked on the strength of your workings. So your workings should be well detailed, explanatory. Now, as you are getting figures, be putting the, the figures you've gotten into where you need them. So it's not the workings that will give you all the marks. So you get an answer from the working of a figure, put it where it relates. Don't even calculate, just put the figure. Keep doing your workings. As you are doing your workings, getting a figure, put it where it belongs until when you are done, you now start calculating. So that's it. At this point in time, I would like to take questions. If you have any question, please ask now. I'll leave for two minutes for you to ask question after which we will bring this class to an end. Okay, let me wait for questions to come. Let me use this opportunity to see if my students, I believe we have this material. I want to hope we have this material. And I'm ready to take questions. If you don't have questions, in the next one minute, we will be ending the class. Okay? So I want you to also read widely and look out for those questions that are commonly coming out in the examination and try to treat them. Also look at past questions and see these topics we've discussed and solve some questions on them. If you run into a big problem, be free to come to the lecturer and the lecturer will help you out. Okay, so thank you so much for making this class a successful one. We'll see you again on Tuesday when another vital topic will be crystallized. Do have a nice day and sleep well. Somebody say, please upload. The material is the same material we used last class. The same material we used last class, I have uploaded it that same day we had our last class. So please go to the group chat and find the material. If you cannot tag me in the group and say you cannot find the material, or you private chat me and let's see how we get the material. Oh, you mean YouTube? Okay, it's not me. I'm not the one who is putting it in YouTube, but you just know that it, the YouTube videos will not be ready tonight. It will not be ready tonight. It will be ready in the normal way and it will be sent to you normally, but it's not going to be tonight. Okay? Because it takes, after now, there's going to be another class. And after the class, the YouTube gets, we follow a process. And when that is done, we upload. It's not something we do in a hurry. Thank you so much. We'll get you your YouTube videos and you will enjoy them. Thank you so much and do have a nice day.